In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Mr. Secretary General, distinguished foreign ministers, ladies and gentlemen, compelled by tragedy and cemented by mutual sacrifice, the partnership between Afghanistan and NATO is entering a new phase. We welcome the end of the combat mission, but more significantly, we welcome the non-combat mission. Our forces are ready to assume their patriotic duty of defending our homeland, but our trust in performance of that duty is enhanced by the knowledge that through the Resolute Support Mission, our forces will be helped in training, supporting, and assistance. NATO's combat mission is demanded immense sacrifice in blood and treasure. Over 3,400 personnel have been killed in action, over 30,000 wounded in action, and hundreds of thousands of veterans live with memories of war in our country. We pay tribute to the fallen, the wounded, and the veterans. May God protect and comfort them and their loved ones. We have a political and social consensus on our strategic partnership with the United States and NATO. Acting on the mandate provided by the election, the consultative law jirga, in the consultative law jirga, our first act as government of national unity was to sign the bilateral security agreement with the US and the status of forces agreement with NATO. The ratification of both agreements by the two houses of parliament which I had the honor of signing on to, into law on November 30th is further proof of the value that our people and government attach to our partnership with NATO. On behalf of our master, the people of Afghanistan, Dr. Abdullah, the CEO, and I express appreciation for NATO's ongoing steadfast support, emphasizing the importance of NATO's contribution to our security efforts. During NATO's decade of presence in Afghanistan, North America, Europe, Australia, Japan, and other troop contributing countries have been safe from massive acts of terrorism. Thank God. Our people, whether children or adults, civilians, military, and our public places, whether mosques, markets, schools, homes, or critical infrastructure, have been and are subject to heinous acts of senseless terror routinely. To hold the mangled body of a child from a volleyball field or speak to the father of a young girl blown to pieces on her way to college is to experience the depth of the fall from values of our tolerant Islamic civilization. We had ferv fervently hoped that NATO's presence would enable our people to live in safety and security enabling our society to focus on elimination of poverty and empowerment of our women and youth. Security, unfortunately, is still our top priority. Fortunately, our people grasping the nature of the imposed conflict upon us while yearning for peace are extending full support to our security forces, enabling us, the leaders of the government of national unity, to identify with, take pride in, and lead and manage our security forces. I'm proud to be the commander in chief of such a patriotic force and fully identify with and represent them. The end is the Afghan National Security Forces are a young but credible force, having grown from a division to a professional force of 350,000 during the last 13 years. Having had the privilege of leading the security transition before the elections, I know the conditions of our soldiers, non-commissioned officers, and commissioned officers firsthand, as I have been to their barracks, in training centers, in all 34 provinces of our country. Knowing their commitment and concerns, we are committed to implement the necessary reforms to create systems of accountability, management, and personnel to ensure the trust of the men and women in uniform and their officers and leaders. The flower of our youth is fighting and dying to build a new nation. God willing, we will prevail 
and overcome the past. Despite our limited revenues, we are allocating more than the agreed share of our resources to support of our national security forces. When support for the Directorate of National Security is included, which was omitted in Chicago, our contribution for 2015 will be $750 million, exceeding the agreed figure of $500 million by 50%. Having been in the lead for security operations for two years, our forces are now ready to assume full responsibility for national security starting next year. This is a remarkable achievement in four years after the articulation of the notion of transition in the Chicago summit. Despite our firm commitment, we are not able, we are not yet able to do everything alone. Your continued support will therefore be key in ensuring our collective gains of the last 13 years will be enduring. Specifically, we need your help to build the processes and systems necessary to ensure the long-term sustainability of forces and to honor your financial commitments made in the Chicago summit during the forthcoming decade of transformation. Meeting the gap in numbers for the resolute mission is critical, as is the presence of framework nations across the critical areas of our country to create a sense of balance and trust. Our security expenditure is nearly 2.5 times our national revenue, neither wanting nor expecting your indefinite support, we are determined to implement of a strategy of self-reliance. Our actions since my inauguration in the formation of the government of national unity should speak louder than our words that we are delivering on our commitment of forming a compact between the people in the state and the government of Afghanistan and our partner governments and international organizations. Permit me to articulate some of the foundational principles of our strategy of self-reliance. Generating and utilizing political capital is our first principle. We have taken the rare step in South Asian Middle East to form a government of national unity that rep represents the absolute majority of the population. This should establish full trust in our capacity to focus on delivery to our people and make sure that we can deliver. Second, we have political will and have demonstrated that political will will be used to create facts on the ground. Our signing of bilateral security agreement in SOFA or one indication, but Kabul Bank, the symbol of corruption in our country on the second day is another. I'm glad to report the Supreme Court is affirmed the judgment of the appellate court in Kabul Bank will be dealt with through the rule of law. Agreement, approval of the agreement by parliament, again, is a critical indication that political will will result in generation of partnership. Promoting good governments from a perspective of the whole of the state and whole of the government is our third principle. We're committed to ensure that reforms are driven by us, owned by us, and implemented by us. But of course, we want to make sure that our partners and us are aligned. We know that there's international fatigue. With aid, we are keen to win not only governments and parliaments of our partner countries, but the public. And we are keen to work with you to align delivery with communication. Rights of women are critical to us, and we are committed to farming, to bringing at least four women, which would be 16% of our cabinet in the coming two to four weeks. And the cabinet will be formed from new faces based on the principles of competence, commitment, accountability, and transparency. Engaging, creating, a competitive export-driven economy is our fourth principle. We intend to use all our key assets to create an economy that would answer the needs of both our security and the eradication of poverty. Engaging neighbors in a dialogue on peace, stability, and prosperity 
as our fourth principle, our actions in the last two months should be clear on this regard. Yesterday, <coughs> we were in Azerbaijan, and again, if had breakthrough as well as with our other neighbors uh, in that, that report. We, want, we intend to produce a regional consensus that a stable and peaceful Afghanistan is essential for regional security and prosperity and for the emergence and cons consolidation of an Asian continental economy. Providing a platform for global cooperation is our fifth principle. Instead of being at the center of a vicious circle of conflict, we intend to be at the center of a virtuous circle of cooperation. Ensuring stability for our people is the sixth and most significant principle of our strategy of self-reliance. Sustaining security generated through use of legitimate force requires that it be embedded in a stable order. Hence our determination for sustaining the political consensus and consent of the people through our comprehensive reform program, especially those of security forces. As peace is our national priority, we are dedicated and determined to launch, lead, and own an inclusive Afghan peace process. Political differences must be resolved politically, but we will not permit anyone to use our country as a battlefield for, for pursuit of illusory ideas, arenas of criminal networks, or spaces of breathing. Terror is supported by networks of criminality and violence but the most significant enabling condition are those governments that in a short-sighted manner decide to tolerate these networks or use them as measures of state practice. We must realize that regardless of the rationale for the genesis of the symbiotic relations that produce reliance on non-state actors by states as lethal instruments of competition, it should be clear that such measures, measures have blowback effects, destabilizing the state system as such. As Afghanistan and NATO mark the resolute support mission, we need to notice that the threats that brought NATO to our country are not only still present, but also constantly morphing into new forms. NATO's gaze must by necessity be global, taking stock of its neighborhoods in the world, focusing on strengthening the international state system as a system of rights and obligations in striving to persuade states not to support or adopt behavior characteristic of malign non-state actors, however, will have multiple benefits for the safety and stability of our interconnected world. We, the people and government of Afghanistan, are committed and determined to overcome history and form value-based compacts with our partners and interlocutors. Let us therefore use the opportunity of the launching of the Resolute Support Mission to articulate and agree on the principles of enduring partnership. We have a strategic relationship that requires strategic understanding, strategic patience, and strategic delivery. Mr. Secretary General, we look very much forward to our continued partnership and be assured that there is a new spirit of partnership in Kabul that will drive the process forward. Thank you.